1957, a Western film called Night Passage hit the big screen. Starring James Stewart and Audie Murphy, the movie follows a former railroad employee tasked with stopping a train robbery. But that's just the beginning. This film is packed with funny, shocking, and sad facts that'll keep you hooked. Did you know that this movie was shot in just over a month? Imagine the hustle behind the scenes. And here's a lesser known fact James Stewart initially turned down the lead role, but he eventually agreed after some persuasion. Now, here's where it gets interesting. We want to hear from you. Do you have a cherished memory associated with this film? Maybe you watched it with your family on a cozy Sunday afternoon or laughed at a particular scene that stuck with you. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. So keep watching to discover more about Night Passage and don't forget to share your own experiences. It's all about connecting through stories and memories. In a classic Western movie from 1957, we follow the story of Grant McLean, a former railroad worker tasked with protecting a train carrying a lot of money. Alongside him are his brother, the train's engineer, and a singer named Charlotte. As they travel through the American West, they face challenges from bandits led by Whitey Harbin. The story focuses on Grant's efforts to keep the money safe while dealing with personal issues. This movie is loved for its thrilling plot and memorable characters, and it's considered a timeless classic in Western cinema. In the mid-1950s, a group of talented individuals collaborated on a television episode for General Electric Theater. This team, consisting of a renowned director, a skilled writer, and a familiar face from the 1939 film Destroy Rides Again, joined forces once more for another episode in early 1957. The quick-paced production of a movie called Night Passage kicked off in late autumn of 1956, and the crew faced the challenge of wrapping it up before the Christmas holidays. The process was swift, adhering to a tight schedule. Interestingly, the lead actor, who had previously starred in the 1939 classic, shared the screen with Audie Murphy, who took on the role in a 1954 remake. The collaboration resulted in a captivating film, marking a notable chapter in the team's shared history. Disappointed by its critical and commercial reception, James Stewart didn't sign on for another Western for four years until John Ford cast him in Two Road Together. Dan Durier plays Whitey for the second time in this movie, having first portrayed the character in Ride Clear of Diablo, which also featured Audie Murphy. The Utica Kid's real name is revealed to be Lee, mirroring the names of the warring brothers Grant and Lee reminiscent of the opposing generals in the Civil War. In the movie, a different director took over when there was a disagreement between two important people. He did a good job telling the story and making the characters feel real. Some actors you might recognize from famous TV shows are in the movie, like the dads from Dennis the Menace and Leave it to Beaver. One of the main actors doesn't show up until about 35 minutes into the story, which adds to the suspense. The director mixed together drama, suspense, and action really well. Because of his work, the movie is still loved by people today. It shows how everyone working together can make something great in the end. Marion Koch, a German actress, had to leave her role as Charlotte due to her pregnancy, which prevented her from fulfilling her contract with Universal International. Consequently, she returned to Germany. James Stewart, despite his initial lack of enthusiasm for the script, accepted the role of Grant McLean because he saw it as an opportunity to showcase his accordion skills. However, all of his accordion playing was replaced by a professional before the movie's release. Notably, the film featured two stars with remarkable military backgrounds, one, a brigadier general, and the other, the most decorated soldier in the U.S. Army, including the Medal of Honor. In other Western movies of the 1960s, both Audie Murphy and James Stewart portrayed the father of child actor Kevin Tate Murphy in Bullet for a Badman and Stewart in Fire Creek. During filming, James Stewart expressed disappointment at the U.S. government's response to the Suez Crisis, especially its lack of action regarding the Soviet invasion of Hungary. The cast of the film includes one Oscar winner, James Stewart, and two Oscar nominees, Brandon DeWilda and Alan Corby. In August, Night Passage was shown alongside another movie, attracting many people who wanted to watch films. During the making of the movie, a new moving camera device was created. It could stay steady even on bumpy ground, which helped capture amazing scenes very accurately. But not everyone liked everything about the movie. Some critics didn't like that James Stewart, the main actor, sang songs and played the accordion. They thought it took away from the movie experience. This caused discussions among both viewers and critics. Even though some people didn't like everything about Night Passage, its mix of new technology and entertainment left a lasting impression on the film world. It shows how creative and inventive the people making the movie were, 
always trying new things to make great art. Audie Murphy and Dan Duryea collaborated on two other films, Ride Clear of Diablo and Six Black Horses. Despite claims that Night Passage was the first Technorama film, the Monte Carlo story actually holds that distinction. Many credits in Night Passage mimic Technorama style. Initially planned as the sixth Western pairing James Stewart and director Anthony Mann, Mann withdrew due to his dissatisfaction with Audie Murphy's casting. This marked the end of Stewart and Mann's cinematic partnership. A Western film featuring James Stewart, Dan Duryea, and J.C. Flippin, Night Passage shares similarities with Winchester 73. Both movies produced by Aaron Rosenberg, shot by William H. Daniels, and written by Borden Chase involve fraternal strife and Dan Duryea as a bandit chief. Anthony Mann declined to direct, questioning the script's quality and the believability of Stewart and Audie Murphy as brothers. Despite careful filming, Stewart and Murphy's height difference occasionally shows. After the film's poor reception, Stewart never spoke to Mann again. Jack Alam, a cast member of the film, expressed his dissatisfaction with his experience working on it. James Stewart had a desire to showcase his accordion skills in the film, but ended up having his performances replaced by a professional player. The movie was shot in Silverton, Colorado, although it was portrayed as Junction City in the storyline. The filming utilized the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad, contrary to common belief that it was the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad. The steam locomotive 476 from the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad used in the film still operates for excursions in Silverton today. In James Stewart's final western of the 1950s, he starred alongside co-star Diane Foster. During filming, Foster witnessed Audie Murphy's legendary temper firsthand. Murphy, riding his own horse named Flying John, became frustrated when the horse wouldn't cooperate for a scene, leading to multiple takes. In a moment of anger, Murphy punched the horse in the face, a rare occurrence in his filmography, where he often portrayed heroic characters. Some critics noted the age difference between Murphy and Stewart, with Murphy appearing too young at 31 to convincingly play Stewart's brother, who was 48 at the time. Despite these challenges, the film remains a notable entry in the Western genre, showcasing the talents of its cast amidst the backdrop of the Old West. Set in the picturesque town of Silverton, the movie showcases stunning mountain vistas against the backdrop of the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. During production, tensions arose between James Stewart and Anthony Mann, leading to Mann's replacement by James Nielsen. Notably, Mann later directed Man of the West, hailed as one of his finest works, starring Gary Cooper. Interestingly, Brandon DeWilda, known for his role as Joey Sterrett in Shane, assumes the character named Joey Adams in this film.